Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from John, KF0HWK. And uh, he, he says, stupid question number 19. There is no stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that is not asked, because you won't get an answer if you don't ask. Okay. Um, I want to tune a mobile antenna, but I'm concerned about keying in a given frequency range that will interfere with other hams transmissions. That is commendable. There is a set of VHF, UHF frequencies that I can access for this purpose. I'd say any of the simplex frequencies would work just fine. Don't key up on a repeater input. Uh, you can check, um, let's see, there is a list of repeaters repeater um, directory okay uh, there's a, a website called repeaterbook.com okay and uh, the repeaterbook.com let me put that down here so you can see it repeater book Dot com and find repeater frequencies that are near you and avoid those. Now your simplex frequencies vary from state to state, um, but uh, like 146.52 is a common one. Uh, there's a similar one for uh, 70 centimeters. And uh, you are also using, let's see, an Anytone ATD 578UV3 Pro uh, also has 1.25 uh, meters on it, 220 megahertz, 222 megahertz. So he wants to tune a mobile antenna. He wants to tune on a frequency other people won't normally be using. Um, unlike CB or GMRS, which have very few channels, uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters are great big bands. And there's always a part in there where... Um, you won't find much action. Go to, um, if you go to your state's uh, frequency coordinator, they'll have a list of simplex frequencies, both for two meters and for uh, 70 centimeters and for 1.25 meters too. And just pick a simplex frequency. Uh, there's a great deal of doubt that you'll hear much of anything on there. Uh, go ahead and use one of those to tune up. Uh, now, identify yourself when you're tuning up every so often, 10 minutes. Okay, um, all right, uh, the radios he's contemplating installing and tuning are the TYT TH9800 and the Anytone ATD578UV3 Pro. Now, it sounds like you're trying to decide between the two because the two radios do almost the same thing. Okay, the Anytone is a DMR radio as well as a plain FM radio. And uh, I would recommend if you buy that, you buy it from Bridgecom Systems because they are the one reseller of that radio that actually provides support after the sale. They've got a lot of training materials on DMR. They have uh, code plugs and things like that you can put in them that are just super. So I'd recommend them for that. I don't know about the TYT, the best place to go, try DX Engineering or Ham Radio Outlet or something like that. Okay, so um, just pick a frequency, simplex frequency, tune it up, it won't take much tuning. Now note that at uh, two meters, a regular uh, HF SWR meter will work. However, the wattage it gives you will be way off. Now the way these uh, meters work is they measure the power going out and the power coming back. And if it's off, it's off by the same amount. So when you do the ratio, the errors cancel and you get about the right uh, SWR uh, reading on there. You want, like any antenna, to try and get that SWR under 2 to 1 across the entire band that you are going to use. Okay? So, 
Uh, now, 440 is a big band, and you may not be able to do that so well. And I'm assuming that you're putting together some sort of homemade antenna for this because there are ample ready-made antennas for these bands, uh, also uh, kits for antennas for these bands. They're not always called kits. They just sell you the antenna and it comes in a million pieces and you uh, put it together and it should work pretty well and it should tell you uh, where you can tune up. So that's what I'd recommend. I really uh, uh, want to commend you for wanting to pick a frequency where you will not interfere with other people. So you definitely want to avoid all the repeater input and output frequencies. But simplex, um, pick a simplex frequency about halfway down the list and uh, try something there. And first, of course, ask if the frequency is in use and uh, then go ahead and do your tuning. It shouldn't take long. Now, note that neither of those radios likes to be keyed down in a position where the SWR is bad for very long. So tune, take a measurement, turn it off. Tune, take a measurement, turn it off. Okay, until you can get that thing up to where it will work well. Now, both of those radios have what's called SWR, uh, high SWR, fold back circuits, meaning that if the SWR is too high, the amount of power put by, out by the radio will drop, okay? But don't, don't mess with it too much. Now, uh, one other thing I should point out at VHF and UHF is that a very long run of lossy coax will make your SWR look better than it really is. Remember that it's the ratio of two powers, there's a complex formula for it, but it's essentially the ratio of the power out versus the power back, okay? And um, if you have lossy cable, the power that goes out, you lose part of it. So when it reflects power back, you lose part of the reflected power. So you got a double whammy there, and that can cause the SWR to look lower than it really is. For if you are the kind of person that's tuning antennas and you want them to work really well, I would suggest LMR 400 cable or you can get um, RG213, which is easier to put a connector on. Uh, but you can get pre-built cables. Uh, I will warn you that the cable will be a lot longer than you think it is. So I would recommend going down to Home Depot and getting a, a length of clothesline. I suggest clothesline because it doesn't stretch. And then run the clothesline the same route that you will run your coax identically. Down under the house, up around the outside, around under the eaves, up to the side, up the mast to the antenna. And cut that rope then and take it down and very carefully measure it and you will be astounded at how much longer that cable is than you think it should be. And then add 10 to 20%, okay? And then order a cable of that length. You can get cables any length you want. Uh, DX Engineering sells its own house brand of a cable, or you can go to somebody like uh, Coax USA or is it USA Coax and get a custom cable there with actual times microwave. Um, LMR 400, you can get actual times microwave cables from ham radio outlet and so on. There are lots of different places that you can get them. Don't get them on Amazon generally uh, because uh, if you get the cheap Chinese knockoff for LMR 400, it can really cause you problems. I, I once um, went to help a friend of mine put in some LMR 400. He was very pleased that he had Times Microwave LMR 400. I went up and looked at it and went, this is not LMR 400. It was thinner. Uh, even though it was printed with LMR 400 on it, I tried to put connectors on it, and the problem was LMR 400 center conductor is a, a soft aluminum with a copper coating, and it, ha it, can, it has a 4-inch bend radius. You can bend it pretty tightly. But this stuff, if you bend it at all, it broke off. And it took me three tries to get the uh, connector on that thing. I, 
I got a connector on there and hooked it up for him. Uh, and I didn't tell him he had Chinese knockoff. But um, you want to avoid the Chinese knockoff. You can also order directly from Times Microwave, or they can give you a dealer near you to get Times Microwave. You can buy the Times Microwave either without cables or with cables. I'm sorry, either without connectors or with connectors. And um, you can get it to the length that you want. Now, if you want to put on your own connectors, you can put on a crimp connector. However, I would recommend for Times Microwave that you go ahead and buy the, you know, this is expensive, buy the Times Microwave connectors, and then you need to buy the Times Microwave tools to put them on. Now, I know they work really well and make wonderful connections because they sent me some to uh, review. They were fabulous, but man, are they expensive. It's like 25 bucks a connector. You're gonna need one on each end. So, and they were very, very nice connectors. Total of crimp, you didn't have to solder anything. Okay, I've rambled on long enough about that, John, but I hope that uh, what I've said is of some help. And to anybody who's tuning an antenna, uh, yes, do find an unused frequency. This is true on HF also. Uh, if you do find you're going to do something on HF, ask if the frequency is in use a couple times because you may not be hearing one side of a conversation. Somebody may come back to you and says, yes, it's in use. Just tune three or four kilohertz away from that and try again. Okay, so there you have it. If you would like to help this channel financially, uh, take a look at decastlercom slash support for different ways you can do that, which includes Patreon, by the way. Uh, or you can go to decastlercom slash giveaway and look for the latest giveaway. The uh, April 2022 one happens to be a power supply that'll power an uh, HF radio, the uh, PowerWorks SS uh 30 dv i think it is and a uh, nice little power supply used it for years but i don't have a use for it right now so um it is going in the giveaway box and until we next meet 73.